All right, how's everyone going today? After those of you who came yesterday, a bit confronting yesterday. Yeah. So uh, how, with the action thing, it's a bit difficult at times to, <laughs> to put into place. But uh, today, what I wanted to do, oh, I'm ringing a bit. Um, yeah, what I would like to talk about today um, for, I don't know, might take about maybe an hour or so first, is, is this uh, issue of what we're going to do to try and give, make the divine truth available to the world for free. And, uh, and also invite you, if you want to be a part of that, to be a part of that. But I want to outline some of the basics of it so there's no confusion. <laughs> and to do that, I'm going to have a little bit of a technical discussion with you about companies and, and, and uh, non-profit organisations and a few things like that. And what I've decided to do is that, for the moment, uh, I want to make sure that all the information that we present at these, at these venues and all the information that's presented about the Divine Truth Park is available to the world, not for donation, but actually for free. All right. So in other words, what I would like eventually here is every time you come along to one of these sessions, that at the back there's collections of whole sets of DVDs that have been done, and you can just pick them up and take them home with you. Things like that. That's what I want to be able to do. I've wanted to be able to do this for some time. It's just I've been uh, probably dilly-dallying myself with regard to hoping that some people would work through different emotions about it. Uh, and so what I've decided instead is to make this happen. So what will happen is that we will start producing um, a lot of the things that we have been producing, and we'll pro build, produce them until we run out of money. And then when we run out of money, we'll stop. And then when we get more money to do it, we'll produce more. And all of the things that will be produced will be given away. So that's, that's our goal. Now, um, what I want to do is outline the kinds of things that will be happening and uh, where you might want to be involved if you feel like you're up to that. And also how, how I want to see it presented to the world and the reason why I'm structuring it the, the way I am. And I was, I'm wanting to put this in a presentation because I want there to be no confusion about my decisions <laughs> about it. Because a lot of times when I make decisions, people assume that I have certain reasons for them that I don't have. And, uh, and I want to make sure that that's quite clear to all of you who are particularly regularly coming along. So firstly, what we've done is myself and Mary have started up a company called Divine Truth. Called Divine Truth. It's an Australian proprietary limited company. The purpose of the company is to hold intellectual property. That's all it does. The reason why we've done that is because I want to make sure that somebody, if we give away this intellectual property to another, if we, if we set up a different company, so if we set up, say, some kind of a foundation, let's say, and, uh, and then said that the intellectual property belonged to the foundation, the members of that foundation can do what they want with the intellectual property, which means they could actually choose to sell it. And I don't want that to happen. So I want to have control over what happens in the sense that I want it available for free and I want to ensure that it's available for free. Does that make sense? So all of the intellectual property, so in other words, all of the stuff, all of these presentations and seminars that are done and, and all of those other things that are done as a result of the presentations and seminars, in the end will be owned by this particular company and that particular company will be owned by myself and Mary initially and we are going to make sure that everything that this owns is available to any person who wants it for free. So it, it won't be just even another organisation that we're going to set up, which I'll describe in a minute, but let's say somebody overseas and they have a company that's about spiritual path or whatever and they decided they wanted to, you know, copy a heap of DVDs and give them out and do all of that kind of stuff. Now, as long as they promise me they're going to continue to do that for free, they will get all of the stuff that we have if they've got a big enough disc to <laughs> get it to them because at the moment it's nearly four and a half terabytes of information. Um, so, so I'm perfectly happy to give them all of that stuff for free. Does that make sense? But the instant that they decide they're going to charge for it, they're not going to receive any more stuff. It's as simple as that. Does that make sense? So that's the, and, and what, what we're doing is we're going to be owning that intellectual property 
and, uh, and making sure that that intellectual property remains for free. And, then, and this will of course happen until earth changes occur. Obviously, after earth changes occur, uh, if they occur, and after they occur, you know, obviously we won't need to run a company anymore probably. There, there won't be much companies around anymore, I would have suggested to you. So, so at that point, this whole thing doesn't matter, but at least we also still have all the intellectual property kept nice and safe. So at the moment, what I, how I've been spending some of your money is that we have bought three six terabyte RAID drives. I don't know if you've ever heard of RAID drives, but they are redundant disk arrays so that some, if one fails, the whole system doesn't fail. And we've bought three of them for the storage of data. They, they cost nearly $2,000 each actually. So we bought three of those just for the storage of the data that has, has been produced. At the moment, one of them is full. So we've already got six terabytes of data uh, from what's been done up to this point. So what we, and what we want to do is, is store that data and manage that data and back up that data. So one of the jobs that I've been doing quite frequently actually is every time I go home, I put new stuff on the net, put the downloads on the net and everything else, but we actually produce every weekend now about 150 gigabytes of data. Right? And so what happens is I back that up onto the, I put that onto the master drives and then what that gets all copied onto to backup drives that I then store in a, in a, uh, a big shipping container. So my, my uh, responsibility, I suppose you could say, is I want to make sure that the data is preserved. I want to make sure the video, the raw, raw video is preserved, the data is preserved. Then people can do whatever they want with it after that. Like, I'm perfectly happy to give that away and people do what they want with it, even if they want to misuse it and misquote me, I'm perfectly happy to give it to them if that's what they want, as long as they do it for free. <laughs> right. Then we've got uh, the, what we want to do now is actually establish another organisation which we'll probably call at this point um, Divine Truth Foundation. This organisation Initially, uh, I want to make sure that the members of that organisation are p totally in harmony with the pr practice of divine truth and divine love in their lives. Does that make sense? But the purpose of the organisation is to provide for free to the public all videos, DVDs, internet stuff, publications, printed books, printed material, everything, including in different translations. Right. The other purpose of that foundation is going to be eventually I feel that people will probably want to donate land and things to set up sanctuaries and the purpose of this foundation is to actually again provide those that pieces of land for free to people that they can come to and do their emotional work, and do, do their emotional clearing work. And in the end I see there probably being 15 or 20 of those pieces of land around the world That'll be like example places where you can come to, to and investigate lots of different things about the divine truth path, including technology um, and, and, and science, but also like things like medical healing, and, but, but all, evolved, all involving the divine love path in some way. Does that make sense? And that organisation will, will, will be the owner, if you like, of those things. Now, initially, what we're going to do is at the moment, we, we personally, myself and Mary, receive donations from you and then we take out our expenses and we pay for some of our things and then we spend the rest on doing these things, on doing the technical things that we've been doing. So just recently we've spent um, around about $12,000 of your donations have been spent just on getting technology um, in terms of getting discs and getting getting sound systems and all of those kind of things so that we can present the truth to you in a, in a more clear, clearer way and also that, that it's safe, that the data itself that is being produced is safe. What we envisage is happening though in the future is that this foundation would receive most of the donations that people give. And the foundation, what we envisage being is that 
any foundation cannot be set up for the, for the profit of one individual. The way you set up a foundation, a not-for-profit organisation, is that the purpose of the organisation is to provide a service to the public without there being profit involved. And any profit that is involved is kept in the organisation and not given to any individual. Does that make sense? That's the purpose of a non-profit organisation. So what we want to do is set up a non-profit Divine Truths Foundation, so that's a non-profit. We don't know whether it will be tax exempt or not yet. It depends upon the rules that the accounting department have. And sometimes those rules require that a tax exempt one has sort of a religious feel to it or a charity feel to it. And I don't want either a religious feel to it or a charity feel to it. Does that make sense? So, so we, we, we will need to organise how we're going to set up this thing if, if it's going to be tax exempt. Now these are very temporary, this is a very temporary thing that we're doing because obviously in the long term future we won't need any of these vehicles if you like to do anything. But at the moment we do need to look after issues like taxation, we need to look after issues of what's happening with your donations, we need to look after issues of ha having uh, an accountability and an openness with those donations. So it's very important to me that anybody associated with this foundation is not going to decide, oh, all of a sudden we've got, you know, a half a million dollars in this foundation, let's go and make it do something else other than what we, the purpose of the foundation is in, in the initial case. So what we want to do is set up the foundation in such a manner that it's impossible for a person, an individual person, including, by the way, myself, to run off with it and use it for their own ends. Does that make sense? We want to actually make sure that all the donations that the foundation receives are going to be used for the purpose that you gave the donations, which is to distribute the divine truth for free. Right. Now obviously there will be people involved in this foundation who um, want to donate their time to do different things. Now many of them might eventually might want to work there in the foundation doing different things. Now when I say work, they might find their passion is a certain part of it, you know, maybe drawing drawings for that can be used in the foundation or maybe like doing some website stuff or, or maybe doing some technical stuff or video editing or sound editing or translation stuff or whatever, right? So, so there might be a lot of people in the end who are involved in this and we need a way for them to actually still experience their own law of attraction with regard to funds. In other words, I don't want anybody in the organisation being dependent upon the organisation's law of attraction for funds, nor do I want any person on this organisation or this organisation being dependent on mine and Mary's law of attraction for funds. Does that make sense? What we need to do is be able to work through all those issues emotionally. So what we're going to do is actually set up a website which each person who actually does work there in this, or does work for the foundation will actually have a little picture there and a description of what they're doing and then a little thing that says you can donate to them individually. Does that make sense? So each individual who's doing any work for the foundation, if they want to have some donation because of the work that they're doing or they want to actually get involved in it more fully, they've got a mechanism to look at their own law of attraction regarding money as well. And that, anything that's said on that foundation that says donate, it'll link off to something within their own, or their own life, maybe a PayPal account or something like that where they can receive donations. But the Divine Truth Foundation itself will receive most of the donations that you have. And in fact, what we want to do once this is set up is have two donation boxes there. There'll be one donation box continuing for myself and Mary. And by the way, if it's not me doing a presentation, then the donation box will be for the person who is doing the presentation. So later on down the track, many of you are going to want to be doing presentations and you'll be start travelling around. And my suggestion there would be Again, we have a donation box for you to receive presentations, donations. Does that make sense? But we also want to have a donation box where the Divine Truth Foundation receives funds, which is accounted for and then used for free to deliver the true Divine Truth for free to the world. That's my goal. Right. 
Now, if it runs out of funds, then it just stops doing the job until it receives funds again. Does that make sense? We're not going to plead with anybody. We're not going to say, oh, well, we can't do that anymore because you did whatever. We're just going to stop and just announce why. Does that make sense to everyone? And that then gives everyone an opportunity to either express gratitude or they can say, oh, well, no, we don't want that happening anyway and, and the whole thing will fall in a heap. That's fine by me too. I don't think it will, but it is fine by me if that's what happens. So what's happening is we want this Divine Truth Foundation have that primary focus, but the Divine Truth Foundation will not own the intellectual property. Because what I want to be able to do is have a vehicle of being able to give other people who want to set up whatever they want any intellectual property as long as they're willing to distribute it for free as well. Right? And this is what I want to be able to do. Now, many of you have volunteered already your time to do all sorts of things in there. Some people have volunteered for translation, some have volunteered for organising things and so forth. And what I want to do for a moment is just talk about the personal requirements, the individual requirements if you want to be involved. The first individual requirement is going to be that you are not resistive to dealing with your emotions. Because uh, what we find is a person, let, let's imagine for, for imagine for a moment that there's 10 people in this organisation doing all this work who are really open emotionally and then one person comes along who's resistive to dealing with their emotions. And this one person says, oh, I really want to do something. Let's, let's say they say, oh, I really want to do a, up a website for you, da 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 da. And, and then one of the people in here say, oh, well, this is how we'd like it done. And this person here goes, no, that's not a very good idea. You know, what, instead what I'll do is I'll go off and do it my way and then I'll come back with it. So they come back with it and say, look, this is what I've done, isn't it amazing? And the person here goes, no, that's not what we wanted at all. Right? And the person, go, and the person here goes, and he goes, why, what emotional reason caused you to go off and do something that we didn't want? There's got to be an emotion behind that, right? And then this person says, no, no, that's not the case at all. So very resistive, very resistive straight away to their emotion. Now, if there's 10 people giving their time for free and one person who's resistive to their emotion, 10 people who are open emotionally, the 10 people's time is getting wasted. Can you see that? If I'm resistive to dealing with my emotion and all of you are trying to help me deal with my emotion, then I'm wasting all of your time if I'm resisting the help that's being given to me. Now, I've, I've got free will. I'm allowed to resist help as much as I want. But what I'm doing, if, if I'm doing that in an organisation, is affecting now the free will of 10 other people. And so what we're going to do with that person is say, all right, no, you're not going to be able to help anymore until such time as you can work through why you're resistive to dealing with your emotion. Does that make sense? And they won't be able to help until such time. And we're perfectly happy to help them work through those emotions, but they won't be able to help until such time as they work through those emotions. So the number one requirement is going to be no emotional resistance. No, I don't know how to spell properly sometimes, do I? That looks like hot for some reason. I don't know what... Maybe I was thinking about Mary there. I, I don't know. Um, The second requirement is really important. Any person associated with anything to do with the divine truth and furthering it is not doing it for me. If you're doing it to get my approval, my acceptance, my concern, my love, my whatever, you're doing it for the wrong reason. If you're doing it to even get God's love, God's acceptance, God's approval, you're doing it for the wrong reason too. There's only one real reason for, for being involved in distributing the divine truth for free. And what, you, what, what do you think that might be? I love God. Truth. And others. That's the only real reason. If we find that a person who comes to offer their assistance 
in the organisation and they start offering resistance and after a bit of time it becomes obvious that they're not doing it because they love God, truth or others but they're doing it for approval, for acceptance, to be noticed, for glory, any other of those kind of reasons. Then again we will say, hang on a sec, let's just stop what you're doing for the moment and let's, let's look at the emotions. Does that make sense? Now the reason why I bring this up is because the focus of the organisation is not to get things done. It's just a vehicle for getting things done. Right? But the focus of the organisation needs to be getting things done in harmony with God's love and truth. That's the focus. Do you see the difference? You see, I can decide to get things done, but I can do it totally out of harmony with love and truth. Can't I? Or I can decide to get things done, but I only do it when I'm in harmony with love and truth. Even with love of myself. So let's say a helper comes along in this organisation and she says, oh, I want to translate it into Swedish. Right? Translate one of these documents into Swedish. So she starts diving away and starts addressing the issue. and She gets about a third of the way through and she feels really, really angry with something AJ said right? that she didn't realise she hadn't heard before. Right? So she stops and she's really angry. Now, right at that point, we need to help her address the emotions. If she's unwilling to address the emotion, then she's in resistance and she can't be used to be help anymore. If she wants to get through her anger, then let her continue and she will finish the job. Now, it may take her two months to get through her anger. And unless we've got someone else who can do Swedish, we're going to wait two months. In other words, we don't want to pressure a person who's offering their time for free to get a job done by a certain time. What we want to do is demonstrate love to them by allowing them to get the job done in their own time, whatever that time may be. Now, what we've decided we'll do to make sure that some of the things will be ironed out is when you come, if you want to offer your services to the Divine Truth Foundation, when it happens, what we'll do is we'll give you a little job to do first. Now, if that little job doesn't, has anything that's like to do with breaking the disharmony with love or truth in it, or you find that you need, we need to give you some feedback or some criticism about it technically or some criticism about it emotionally or whatever, we give it. We give that, that criticism to the people. If they resist it, then straight away we know we can't use them for the big jobs yet until they get through those resistances. Does that make sense? As soon as they're not resistive and they demonstrate a humility, in other words, they demonstrate the principles that we're actually trying to accomplish by teaching it. If they demonstrate those principles, then it's going to be fantastic, no matter what emotion you work through and how long it takes. And I don't have a... This, this organisation is not focused on getting things done in the fastest possible time. What it's focused on is getting things done because we love God and we love truth. That's all. Does that make sense? Not being focused on, like, I'm going to have a schedule now, this particular thing needs to be out by that particular date, and if you're not out by that particular date, get on your back, and none of that. None of that will be happening. If it happens, and it keeps happening, you let me know, because it's going to be changing pretty rapidly, and the person who does it with you is going to be in a, quite a lot of trouble, if we can call it trouble, <laughs> um, in the sense that I will talk to them about about their emotions and their feelings about what's going on. So, so my suggestion um, there is regarding this foundation is we set up a foundation that is run in harmony with the principles that we're teaching. Now my belief is, is if we do that and we run it in harmony with love, if love and truth, the principles that we're teaching, what's going to happen is it's going to naturally grow. And many of us who have wanted a vehicle to do things like art or other things and, and actually have an income for that, eventually we'll actually be able to have a source of, of, of that through this process of giving divine truth to the world. But remember this foundation cannot have any person individually benefiting from it. So, so you know the linkages that I said that will be there is well, this person does that job and you can donate to them. The donation to them, is ju that's just the service we're offering the person who is giving their time. That's all we're doing, is offering them that service. If you click donate, whatever is happening into their bank account, I've got no 
interest in whatsoever or knowledge of and have no desire to know about whatsoever. All we want to know about is what funds come in and using those funds for free to, demonstrate, to distribute the divine truth to the world. That's all I'm interested in. Now, any, um, any a property that's donated, and in time property probably will be donated to the foundation, any property that is donated to the foundation, again, must be used for the same purpose. So again, it has to be used for free for the public to actually benefit from the principles from the Divine Truth Organisation. So what we want to do is set up those properties in such a way that they become emotional sanctuaries. That doesn't necessarily mean that they look like sanctuaries to you. <laughs> there will be places where you can go and work your way through different emotions without being harmed by anyone in the environment. And eventually what I see happening is people will actually want to be permanently living in those sanctuaries so that they can help the people that come to those sanctuaries to, with their emotions and everything. So eventually what I see happening with a lot of these sanctuaries is that they're quite large. Um, they may even be thousands uh, of people living there at any one time. They'll have quite large auditoriums, maybe even as large as this one where people can learn truth and so forth. And many of you probably at some point in the future will actually be up here some point talking to a group of people about the truth that you've learned. And that will all be part of that sanctuary. Now all of these things will happen by donation of funds. And it will just be depending on our law of attraction as to how those funds come to us. Now if it doesn't happen, then it doesn't happen. And that's fine as well. Does that make sense? But if we've got this vehicle that we can ensure everything is going to go out for free, at least we've got a place to start. So that's what we'll be doing in the future. Now, um, I've felt this for quite a lot of time, but I've not done anything about it. One of the reasons why I've not done anything about it is that I've been waiting for other people to do something about it. <laughs> And I didn't want to act myself, right? So that's, uh, I talked about that a bit yesterday. But what I've decided to do is, um, it doesn't, and one of the reasons why emotionally for me was that I was, I was afraid of people's criticism, afraid of people thinking that I want to build an empire and all these kind of things. And as I've worked my way through different ones of those emotions, I've just decided, well, no, I know what my motives are, even if you don't know what my motives are, I know what they are. And all I want to do is make sure that those, motive, those things are carried out in a manner that's harmonious with love and truth and also harmonious with the taxation rules and everything else that goes on as well. Now eventually, like I said, a lot of these things won't be needed. But at the moment, I, my desire now is to do as much as possible before earth change events occur. And what I mean by that is, uh, is that I don't care when they occur, I just want to get as much as I possibly can do done in the sense of emotionally, at the soul level, I'm not talking about do in terms of physical do, I'm talking about my own growth firstly, get as much of that done as I possibly can before earth conditions or earth changes occur, and I want to help as many other people to do the same before that time occurs. That's my goal at the moment. And the reason why I feel that way is that once earth changes occur, if there are large groups of people who are totally knowledgeable about the principles of the soul, totally knowledgeable about the principles of how to release emotions and change the law of attraction, totally knowledgeable about how to connect to God and, and, and there are actually even some of those who may be in this state where they're at one with God. If we've got a whole group of people in this place, can you imagine how much of a positive effect that's going to be on others? It's just going to be immense. Whether world earth changes occur or not, it's going to be immense. But if earth changes do occur, it's going to be so immense because of already many of them being in an emotionally open pace to have that assistance and help. So, so my goal now is to, I've been just delaying myself and delaying and delaying and delaying and I've had some emotional reasons that I've had to work through about why I've been delaying and so forth and putting it off and some of those reasons have to do with the fact that I want some private time with Mary and, 
and, and so you know I don't want to be too involved with other things and there's been quite a lot of different emotional reasons for me why I've put it all off. Uh, but what I want to do now is just make sure it starts happening now. And I know there's a team of you who want to do that as well. And so now we've got a team together where, who want to do those kind of things. Now's the most appropriate time to do it. Now, you can help in lots of different ways. Uh, just by donating to the foundation, you can help. Or donating some time to your foundation. Or, or, or any of those things. You can, anything, land, time, anything can help. And as long as we stay focused on the divine truth being available for free to everybody in that organisation, nothing's going to go astray. As soon as any of us start focusing on something else instead of that, even just getting something out there faster is focusing on something else other than that, and then things will start going astray and we want to be able to address that. So what we've decided to do initially is maybe have two or three people, including myself and Mary, who are on the board of that foundation, who can actually make sure that the foundation is operated with love and truth. And in time, what I would like to do is not do that. In time, what I would like to do is step back completely from that foundation and have that foundation run by a group of people who are in love and truth and who dearly want their connection with God and are focused on that. And those people can eventually run that foundation. At the moment, of course, while I have an emo any emotional injuries, if I'm a member of this foundation or, or on the board of this foundation, what will I, I will affect this foundation with my injuries. Can you see that? Like, so let's say one of my injuries, let's say I, so I was organising things in the foundation. And not me I'm talking about. Let's say one of you was organising something in this foundation. But, I, but, but the person who's organising it has an emotional injury with women such that he's conciliatory to women. In other words, he gives women more slack than he gives a man. Let's say that's the emotional injury. So any man who comes along to help here, he gets treated in a loving manner. In other words, there's no slack given. You know, he's given on honesty and truth and he's being loved all the time. But if a woman comes along and does something and then does something a bit unloving, this guy won't ever address it. Can you imagine the damage that's going to do to the foundation? Eventually, we're going to have a group of women running the foundation who are angry with men, not addressing issues. Does that make sense? If that man doesn't work through his emotional injury. Now, I've got no problem with there being a group of women running the foundation. I have a lot of problem with a group of women running the foundation who have men issues. <laughs> Just like I have a lot of problem with a group of men running the foundation with women issues. Does that make sense? And what we want to do is make sure that if we are associated with the foundation in any way, that we actually do want to deal with our emotions. And that's why no, having no emotional resistance or little emotional resistance is such an important criteria if we want to help. Now, another thing I do not want is any in this foundation is any like seeking of glory or attention. The problem with such a foundation is quite often um, people become involved with them who, who want to be well known for doing things. That obviously is not the motive. The motive here is I love God, love truth, and I love others, and I want to do as much as I can do for them for nothing. That's my motive. Does that make sense to everyone? So just if you do want to be involved with helping the foundation grow and, and present the truth to free to the world, allow yourself to examine your motivations. Right? There are going to be times when you're attacked. And if you have bad motives, you're going to want to get away from that. If you have a good motive, you'll stay true to the fact that you love God, you love truth, and you love others. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, is there any questions you would like to ask about it? Graham? Um, this no emotional resistance, I love God, truth, and others, yep. that very important things, um, how are, how, will it be you that's making these decisions and about whether somebody who's got some emotional injuries is going to make it difficult for them to work for the foundation or what? I hope not because I, I don't want to be doing all of that. However, what will happen is that each person will have interactions with other persons. For example, at the moment Brian is doing a lot of the original mastering for DVDs. 
Does that make sense? So let's say he had a helper come along and said, Brian, I want to help you master the DVDs. And, and Brian says, no worries, I'll give you one job to do. Remember, the test job to do. He gives me, he, me the test job to do. I go and do it exactly the way Brian didn't want it done. <laughs> All right? And then I come back and say, isn't it great, Brian, what, what I've done? It was better than your idea. It was this, this, that, this, that, and everything else, right? So I come back to him. Now, Brian needs to be in the position where he can address that emotionally with me. He needs to be clear enough emotionally to be able to address that issue with me. He needs to do it, not AJ. Uh, he, he's the one with the interaction. This is all his law of attraction. We need to run the organisation by the principles that we're teaching. It's my law of attraction, I need to address the issue. So if it's Brian's law of attraction, he needs to address the issue. If it's, if it's and, and I'm this helper who's come along who think I know better than Brian, I need to address some of my issues as well. And Brian needs to be able to say to me, actually you've got this issue, the reason why we gave you this test job is we, we wanted to see how much you're willing to actually follow some you know, guidelines. And you're obviously not willing to follow guidelines. Have a look at that as an emotional perspective. Why don't you want to? We can't help you until you're willing to follow some rules and guidelines because we want a particular way to present these particular things that we're doing. And he can explain all that and then he can start, if he's sensitive emotionally, he can start pointing out to them what the emotions are. Now, if I just get angry with Brian and say, oh, Brian, like, you know, you don't appreciate anything I've done, that, uh, you know, and off I go with Brian, then Brian needs to say, no, hang on a sec, this is now in this state. I have emotional resistance. This man has emotional resistance to what I'm saying to him. He's not owning his own emotions. Even if Brian was wrong in what he's saying to me, if I'm upset with Brian, I'm out of harmony with the principles of divine truth. And Brian needs to address that with me. And so once he addresses that me, then he will make the de that decision. He would have to make that decision if he's, if he's open emotionally himself. But that's where it's very important that he's open emotionally as well. Because if he's closed emotionally and he's telling somebody else to be open emotionally, then he's a hypocrite <laughs> and he needs to address that issue emotionally. Now, sooner or later these things will come to me, even if I'm not involved in the organisation, and I will attempt to address them, but I'm not going to get involved in individual stuff between people when they are needing to deal with their own law of attraction about all of those matters. All I'm concerned about is, has this person, me, in this example I've given with this interaction, been treated with love? Has Brian yelled at him, told him off, treated him badly, any of those things? That's all I'd be worried about. And has, has Brian acted in harmony with love? That's all I'm concerned about. Now, in terms of who makes the decision, well, in the end, whoever is on the board will make those choices in the end if, if it gets that bad. And when I say gets that bad, it shouldn't ever get that bad because if I'm in a state of where I'm listening to divine truth, I know that one of the things, of one of the principles of the divine truth path is to have no emotional resistance to what's being said to me. Can you see that? Like, I know that. So, so if I'm now disagreeing with that inside of myself, I'm not following the divine truth path anymore. And that's okay. Have that pointed out to me and I resist that as well then obviously we can't work with you in the organisation. It's as simple as that. We're not going to condemn you, we're still going to love you and all those kind of things, but it's going to be very hard to work with a group of people who are resistive to their emotions in the organisation. Does that make sense to everyone? So in answer to your question, the person who is responsible for whatever is being organised surely should be also at the emotional capability where they're able to address the emotional issue with the person involved who's helping. And if they aren't, then we need to address that issue. And I, so I suspect that, and I feel that very few issues should ever come to myself or Mary or, or someone like that. It should all be happening with the individuals involved because that's their law of attraction. So it's not my law of attraction that I had a young upstart man trying to tell me what to do, it's Brian's. <laughs> Does that make sense? And it's not, and it, and it's not, it's not my, and it's not Brian's law, uh, sorry, it's not your law of attraction that I was the young upstart man trying to boss Brian around. That's, that's mine. So that's how we'd like to run it. Exactly the principles of the divine truth process and the divine love process. That's how we'd like to run it. Now there'll be times, because none of us are perfect yet on that path, there'll be times when that's not happening. 
And of course we want to address those times so that it does happen. And that's going to mean being open and honest and truthful with each other and being able to raise issues. If a person who is looking after the organisation is in a state of complete humility themselves, they will never try to lord it over other people. But they will be firm for principles of love and truth and they will also be firm for things that technically have to happen in a certain time frame, or a cer not a certain time frame, but a certain sequence of events. And they will be firm for that and they need to be. Does that answer? Yeah. Um I'm also, like in the spirit world, it's easy to see who should be running the show because they're brighter. <laughs> yes, I agree. Um, so we don't have the benefit of being able to see that here. So, you know, I can imagine the, the naysayers um, are likely to say, well, this is a power structure that is, is open to abuse because the people at the top can say to anybody, well, you're not emotionally open to what we have to say. Um, so what would you say to those people? Um, I don't feel I need to say anything to those people, Graham. But it's interesting that you do feel I have to. Um, you see, there are a lot of people right now who believe that I'm already on a power trip and narcissistic and so forth. And they don't know me and they don't know my motives. Um, that's okay, they're allowed to have their opinions. But any person, if this is a free organisation with membership and, and, and everything, any person can leave it at any time. They don't need to stay in it. There's no money changing hands in the sense of money being paid from the Divine Truth Foundation to a person to get a job done. So there's no need for control. There's only, need for, from a, there's only a need to make sure everything is done for free and with these principles involved, that's all. Now, now if people want to say, oh, that creates a power structure and everything else, well, if that's what they want to do, say, well, that's up to them. They're allowed to say that. I, I don't feel we need to say anything to them about it. All I want to do is make sure that the organisation is run in harmony with divine love and truth, that's all. And it doesn't worry me what anybody says about it. You know, they can say it's a cult, they can say it's whatever. Like, all I want to do is make sure it's harmonious with love and truth. If it's harmonious with love and truth, it's not ever going to tell anybody what they have to do. It's only going to say, well, we can't accept that particular treatment at this point. That's all they were going to say. And, and it's never going to tell people to not do, so, do something or do something, but there are going to be technical guidelines that are going to have to be followed in order for us to get the job done in the simplest and most effective manner without wasting anybody's time. And those guidelines are definitely going to have to be enforced and followed. Otherwise, we'll have lots and lots of people donating time and wasting it. And I don't want that either. That's not loving to those people. I don't, so I don't want 10 people receiving one document to translate and then, you know, the first one who gets it out gets the Guernsey sort of thing. That's not how I, I want to see it done because all that's going to do is that what happened to the time of the other nine people? It just got wasted and I don't want to waste anybody's time. So, so if I notice any of those things happening, I will need to address it just like if any of you notice any of those things happening, you would need to address it. So if you notice something happening that you feel is unloving in the Divine Truth Foundation, say something. But the truth is that if something is happening unloving, we need to address it. And I'm perfectly happy to address it in harmony with love and truth. Not in harmony what, with what people think love is, but rather what it really is as well. So would you say that <clears throat> anybody in the organisation or around the organisation, if they see something that they, they feel is unloving, that it's they, the thing to do is to go and have a chat with the people involved? Yes. Firstly, have a chat. The most loving thing to do is to have a chat with the person who you felt was unloving. <laughs> That's number one. Like a lot of people come to me and say, oh, such <laughs> and such was unloving. I go, yeah. And when did you talk to them about it? Like... Did you either just act or did you talk to them about why are you coming to me about it? Why do you want to tell me for? Right? It's not my business they're unloving. Can you see that? Like, it's not my business if somebody else is unloving. It's not even my business if Mary's unloving. Who's my partner? It's not my business if my children are unloving unless it's my law of attraction. But it's definitely not my business if you're unloving. Like a lot of people have been coming, like I've been getting a barrage of emails lately from people who say, oh, here's a person that you, who's on your divine love path. This is, the, this is an email to me. Here's a person on your divine love path 
and look at how loving, unloving they're being to me. And I read the email and say, yeah, they have been unloving to you. I agree. So? They're not practicing the divine love path, are they? Why do you think they are? If they're being unloving to another person, they're not practicing the divine love path. And it's not up to me to come up to you and tell you that you're not. And why is that person emailing me and not talking to the person about how unloving they're being? Why are they doing that? Like there's an emotional reason why they're doing that, which is unloving. They want me to do something that they should be doing themselves. That's unloving. So my answer would have to be, I'd have to respond to every one of these emails, both of you are being unloving. And then I'd have to respond to like, this is how you're being unloving, this is how I'm... I don't want to waste my time with all that. I'm presenting the, love, what, I'm presenting the truth about love already. All you need to do is be humble enough to accept it or reject it. It's up to you. So I, uh, and I feel the same in, the organisa in any organisation that's being set up. Exactly the same principles apply. Exactly the same principles. Nothing different. So if somebody is being unloving to you from, and who's in this organisation, talk to them. <laughs> Tell them why, where you feel they're being unloving. Right? But also look at your own emotion as well. How did you attract this unloving behaviour? What's going on inside of you that attracted this unloving behaviour? Do that as well. In other words, apply the principles of divine truth and love in your life, even if it's in an organisation. Does that make sense? Now, as to other people who are willing, who want to criticise or whatever else, well, I said yesterday, those who don't want to act generally criticise. And that's the general thing that most of us need to come to accept. If you have a pure desire to love God, love truth and do things for others, then what will happen is you will stop criticising when it doesn't happen and you'll just start doing it yourself. Right? And that's what will occur. So people who want to criticise, so there'll be things that are going on in the organisation, particularly initially when, when everyone's not as developed as they could be, there'll be things certainly that are going on that are disharmonious with love and truth. Right? The key is, what do we do about it? Well, let's follow the principles of divine love and truth in dealing with the issue. That's what we do about it. So what's one of the first aspects of love? Is if you're upset with a person, firstly... Feel your emotional reason why you're upset with the person. Does that make sense? Like, don't, you don't even need to talk to them yet. You need to feel your own emotional feelings. You need to release those emotional feelings and get to the point where you have totally f released the childhood causal emotional reason why you're upset. I've had to do that with you every group, to be frank. Every group I come to, many of you treat me very unlovingly. And you don't even know it yet, some of you. Right? And I don't come up to you and say, oh, you were unloving, yes, no, you were unloving, you were... How many of you have had me come up to you personally after a group and say that you've been unloving to me? No one. Why do you think that is? Because my first goal is to practice the principles of divine truth that I'm teaching you, which is I need to own my own law of attraction and feel my own feelings about what has been done and look at why inside of me I attracted it. That's the first thing. When I go through all of that and release all of that, it's amazing, you know, you go through that and release all of that. Not only do some of you then change in your treatment of me, without you even knowing, but ironically, I don't have any more feelings about how you treated me. Does that make sense? And nothing had to happen aside from me deal with my own emotion. Now, if I apply the same principles in the foundation, then the foundation is going to grow as much as I will grow. Does that make sense? And so if a group of people are growing in the foundation, the foundation is going to do very, very well in terms of being a vehicle of distributing divine truth for free to the world. If the group of people in there get all stuck and bothered and get into control, power issues and everything else, then obviously it's going to all just fall in a heap, isn't it? because they're all operating opposite to God's laws and principles. Jen? Um, who will decide, in a practical sense, what things will look like in terms of the aesthetics? Um, will, will that be based on a person's skill? Will it be based on a person's 
appointment? Will it like? Can you see that there's already an emotional reason for asking the question? Of course. What's the emotional reason? Um, and many of you will have this same emotional reason, by the way, so can you feel it's it? It's got to be about control. Control of your creativity. This is what it's about. And in actual fact, the real question I wanted to ask is can you remain anonymous? Yes, of course. In terms of the web, my real question that I didn't have the courage to ask was not the first one. Well, it we, was about we want to go back to the first one. Though. Okay. <laughs> but go on, right. tell me the second question. All right. Um, can you donate, donate and remain anonymous? Of course. Yes. Okay. You can even donate your time, your experience, or whatever, it, and remain anonymous. The service is there, though, if you want to sort of like have enough money to cover over some of your things and work out through your law of attraction events. The service is going to be available to you that people can donate to you because of you doing things for free, if they want. There's just a service which you don't have to take up. None of this, none of, none of this is, all of it's based on free will. None of it has to happen. In answer to your first question, though, what will happen a lot is that many of us have some very, very, very fixed ideas about what pertains to our own creations. And often what happens is that we want to create things a certain way so that it has this individual flair and individual touch in it. And we don't realise that for many of us that what's driving that is actually a desire, is actually an unhealed emotional desire inside of us. Right? That we want to be seen as an individual, we want to be seen as a person who, who is creative, and we want to be seen as a person a certain way, we want to be seen to be unique. And a lot of that is because we actually don't feel those things inside of us yet. And instead of feeling those things, what we do then is project it to the universe around us. In other words, we expect the universe to honour those feelings because we ourselves aren't honouring those feelings. And we ourselves are actually very hooked in emotionally to what we create as a definition of ourselves. Now, if I was like that with you, I would never have told you any divine truth. Because see, see, none of what I'm saying to you, I feel is mine. So I've had to go through the process of feeling that nothing I do is mine. And I, by the way, what I do doesn't define me. It defines me for many of you because you haven't yet worked through the emotional reason. Like when I say I'm Jesus, you think, you conjure up in your mind a certain definition. Does that make sense? Of what Jesus is and, and I become that to you. But that doesn't define me either. I am who I am and I am who I am without my creations. Does that make sense? Now, now when one thing in an organisation when you're creating for an organisation is you need to have healed that emotion. Because if, if you don't heal that emotion, you'll start creating but you still want to have your creations being impacted upon the organisation. So in other words, you're now defining who you are through your creation. And if you do that, at some point, you're going to come to grief with that because that's a part of, it comes from a deep feeling of unworthiness in a certain area. Does that make sense to everyone? So in an organisation, yes, someone will define what's the best thing to do. And some, that someone might be a group of people who define it. But most of the time it may not be. It may be one person who's actually said, no, I want it done this way. And the reason why I want it done this way is that, 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 that. And they might list off 30 reasons why they want it that way. And from a technical perspective, and I've been involved in technology all my life, from a technical perspective, you can save bucket loads of time if things are done a certain way. All right? When I say bucket loads of time, you can sometimes save whole weeks of a person's time. You can translate a week of a time into an hour of time, sometimes if things are done a different way. Now, most people come along and say, but I want my individuality in that. Well, yeah, that's great, but you're now going to waste 40 hours of time. Now, is that a loving thing, just for the sake of your individuality? So my feeling is if you want to create things from an individuality point of view, and you want to do things in that way, then go and create your own website called, in your case, Jen, might be called jennyhighbloom.com, whatever, right? 
and then put all of your creations on that site and put a donation panel on there and you'd be totally harmonious with divine love to do all of these things. And if that's what you want to do, do that. That's fine by me. But if you want to do it as a part of the foundation, then people who are going to be involved in the foundation are going to need to be able to work together for one common cause. And that means getting rid of these things that define my ego. Getting rid of these things that say that I'm saying to myself, oh, I'm a good person now because I did this. I'm a good person, I'm approved of because I did that. What we want to do is get to the point where we know we're a good person and we can do nothing and still know it. Does that make sense? In the world today, we define our job, we define our worth usually through our job. You go up and ask, you ask a person, how are you? What do you do? This is almost the second question you ask a person, isn't it, most of the time nowadays? What do you do? How does that define them at all? Well, it might define some of their interests, but a lot of times in the world we live in today, it doesn't even define those because most of us are not living in our passion when it comes to our work. So it doesn't even define who I am as a person. It doesn't define my passions. It doesn't define my desires. I'm barely getting to know this person if I focus on what they do. And, but because of that injury, many of us then feel that it's what we do that gives us our worth. And that's not the truth. Right? When you're on the divine love path, you'll get to the point where you realise that no worth comes from what you do. And a lot of what we've done has been pointless right? as well. And not only pointless, but actively in opposition to what God would have done. Right? And so we come to realise that after a while and we go, whoa, wow. Like, and then we start going through these crisis crisis of identity because, because we've put all of identity in the bucket of what we've done and what degree I have and what educational education I have and whether I'm a mother or not a mother or whether I'm a father or not a father and whether I have children and, and all of this defines me. And in the end it's not going to define you. None of those things will define you because you'll connect fully with your personality and just begin to express your passions and desires and longings without needing to have someone define them as good or otherwise. What a relief <laughs> that will be, won't it? Like, how much of our life is, how much of our childhood is, oh, you've got to get a good grade, because if you don't get a good grade, you're not going to get a good, you know, university. Well, in Japan, you know, it starts even younger than that. You've got to get a good pre-pre-preschool before you get a good preschool. And then if you get a good preschool and you're pretty good there, you get a good you know, good entry into school and then, do you know what I mean? It goes like this all the time. There's so much definition on what we do and how we perform and we want to, like, this is not what this wants to be. What we want to do is just have one focus. We want, because of our love for God, truth and for others, we want the divine truth available for free and we're going to do as what we, whatever we can do with the time we have available to make that happen. And it doesn't worry me if you decide to use Arial 10 point when I'd prefer Roman, at times Roman 12. <laughs> does that make sense? But it does concern me if you've got Arial 10 point one document, times Roman 12 in another, Gothic 15 in another, and, and so forth. There's so much inconsistency. Now, how do I put that into a database? That concerns me. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, and in actual fact, that's, that was what was behind the question I know, in, terms of, in terms of skill and understanding, but yep. you've already covered that with the technical aspect of what you said, that there are some ways that will be time-saving and are better for want of a better way of putting it. Yep. Um, I, I wrote a, a program uh, when I was back writing programs uh, that actually what it does is it is allows me to produce letters with letterheads with different things in a, in a, in a templated form in a database driven environment in a, in a universal environment. So I can do it with 200 people operating it, right? And you can just write new templates for every single job, right? You know, over and over again. Now that software I feel could be used in this organisation at some point, right? Because it, on the average to produce one document it saved every place where I installed it when I was doing those kind of works. It saved them nearly an hour per document, right? with the formats all being fixed and everything else. 
Now, if you add that up over an organisation's time, that's like huge amounts of time being... So, so what I'm saying is that technically, there are going to be things that structure things uh, eventually that are going to make every job easy. Right? That's what we don't want to waste your time. Your time is your only resource that's irreplaceable. Even your body's replaceable. <laughs> but your time isn't. Whatever happens today, you can't ever get back. You can change it tomorrow, but you can't change today after it's done. So I don't want to waste your time today. Does that make sense? I just want to make sure that we're discussing the truth and love and all those things that are going to enhance your life today. And if we all have that viewpoint here, then we'll be working for a common goal. And there's going to be some people who have, have far better knowledge than I do about certain matters. So me, as you know, I'm a terrible speller. Right? So getting me to edit a document is pretty pointless. <laughs> Even in English, right? So that's, that's pointless. You might as well give that to somebody else. Like, I can't do that. And I need to be aware of my own limitations. Right? But, but I've been in the computer industry for 24 years. Right? I started when I was 16. I ran, I ran four companies in it. Right? So do you think I know a lot about technology and how to organise technology and everything? Of course. That, that's a forte. Now, it's not something I'm passionate about necessarily, but it, it's going to help me a lot with all of these things, right? So I know how to run a company too. I had five of them. So how many of you have had five companies to run? <laughs> right? Now, some of the people will come along who have. Do you know what I mean? So they'll know what I'm talking about. But can you see how each of us will have different skills and we've got to be humble about those particular skills? And we've got to and allow them to be used wherever, wherever we feel it's possible. So you notice, even now, I'm still carrying around sound equipment right, to venues and setting it up and dismantling it. The reason why is because no one yet has even offered to want to be trained in it yet and follow me around for every venue. Yeah? I know that. But, but that's what I'm saying. Now, when somebody does, and my law of attraction changes it, I'll show them what to do with everything. Now, some of them will say, oh, but I don't want to do that. And, I, and I'll say... I'm sorry, then you can't help me. <laughs> or they'll say, yeah, I want to do that, and then they do it all the different way, and then the next time I come to a venue and they're not there, I've got to unpack this, and where's that, and where's this device, and I've got to go down the street and buy something, and do you know what I mean? That'll all be a mess as well. Can you see how we need to have some structure with things if we're going to have people doing them? And our law of attraction, as it changes, will bring those people to us. Yeah? Any other questions? I must have presented this pretty good. Um, <laughs> have them, no questions. Karen, thanks. I just wonder when, why is it ever necessary to point out to somebody else that they're being unloving? Um, well, firstly, in an organisation sense, if I observe you treating Brian badly and I see Brian accepting it and I see you being unloving, then my, it, it, I, I have to point out to both of you that you are both being unloving. If I want this organisation to retain its particular focus, which is focused on divine truth and love. So I may have to point out to both of you that you've been unloving right, in an interaction if there's a disagreement or disharmony. But if both of us are actually owning our own emotions and being humble, that's a highly unlikely event. Right? Because, because if both of you were owning your emotions, Brian would feel, yes, uh, another woman tried to control me just there, a uh, bit angry woman, and what do I do with her? I try to placate her and do that, all those unhealed emotions, and I'm being very specific here because Brian knows that he's got these emotions. Right? And then I know, and I know you've got these emotions still of you know, not fully opening up to the man because there's a bit of anger there with the man and so forth. And, and, you know, you both would own those emotions in an interaction, right? If you were both humble. But we can't guarantee that everyone's going to be like that because nobody in the organisation will be perfect at the beginning. And so, therefore, there needs to be able to be other people come to us and say, actually, I feel 
what I observed there wasn't loving for both of you. Does that make sense? Now, it's an act of love for me to tell you when you're unloving. If I come from an intent, like from a pure intention. But don't you often feel whether the person wants to hear it and so you don't tell them because you know they're not going to want to hear it? No, but I will say they don't want to hear it, generally. I've said that to many of you. You've come up to me and asked a question. I've said, I'm sorry, but you don't want to hear the answer. So I will say that. I'll be just truthful. Does that make sense? Or somebody says, I want to know the answer. I really want to know the answer. I say, I tell them the truth and then they get angry with me. And then I say to them, well, if you're angry with me, you didn't want to know the answer. But it's more like if, if you notice something that they've done unlovingly, you go off and do your thing. Is there any point in going to them after you've done that too? Because they will either come to you or they won't. Exactly. Yeah, there is no point after that. that remember yesterday's conversation was all about acting. After that point, you might as well just act. So in the organisation, if somebody treated someone unlovingly and, then, and it was addressed and then they still did, treated them unlovingly, then they'd have to act. We'd have to just say, I'm sorry, but we can't use you in the organisation at this point until you can get to the point where you can treat somebody lovingly. And that's okay. Like, it's not a judgement either. It's just we don't want to waste other people's time with somebody's emotional resistance. Like, it, that's an unloving act too. So if I, if I, for the sake of ten of you, focused on one of you emotionally, personally, and I didn't feel there was some kind of benefit to the rest of you, then it's pointless me having this interaction with this one person. It's unloving to the others involved. And, I, and in the organisation, that's particularly the case when people are donating their time to help with different things. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions that you have about the matter? Any general opinions you would like to offer? Katerina, down the front, thanks. Uh, how then will it be monitored in a f different country? Um, well, with communication nowadays, Katerina, like there's email and, and Skype communication and so forth, for most people it's almost like you're sitting there next to the person nowadays. Um, so as long as the person who's overseas helping has a computer, then it's relatively easy to, to maintain all of these different things in a different country. Eventually what I feel is going to happen is if, if growth occurs so much that in another country a whole group of people want to help, then in that particular country we're probably going to also have to set up a foundation and run it and have people travel over and show them how to run it and so forth. If the growth occurs before world changes occur that much. That but it sense? will start with a desire of these people. Like Definitely. they would want to come forth and say, you know, oh, I want to do this or I can do that. And this Definitely. Is what I can offer. Always yeah. starts with desire. Always. So if, if there's nobody over there who wants to do it, then what's the point in making it happen over there? Nothing. So, so, and this is a part, a part of the problem at the moment overseas, is that many people want other people to do things for them, but at the moment don't have a desire to do things for other people very strongly. And that's an issue that they do need to work their way through. Their work their way through. In Australia it's a little different because obviously I've spent a lot of time in Australia over the last two years um, talking to people about truth and a lot of growth has occurred. But the reason why I haven't been travelling much overseas is because I don't feel a very strong demand at this point for people overseas to really want to know the truth. In fact, I feel quite the opposite at times. Almost every person who's in a very highly uh, criticising place with me or angry with me comes from overseas. <laughs> um, so, and one of the reasons why that's the case, obviously, is because they don't spend much time with me and they don't know me very well generally. And even those who think they've spent a lot of time with me so they know me, have, are not focusing on the fact that they're still in a place of anger with me, so therefore in a place of, you know, that's not a loving place with me. And that's the reason why I haven't spent much time with them. So, so at the end of the day it's going to be driven by desire, but also by how much love the person has for truth and for God. There'll be a lot of people attracted to this who have, do not believe on Jesus at all, do not care about whether I am or not, but all they want to have is like the pageant messages available to the world for free, for example. And I'm perfectly happy to accept their help and assistance as long as, again, it's done in harmony with loving God, loving truth and loving others and they have no emotional resistance. Right? And so then the foundation would be the one that would um, 
communicate with the people overseas to get the feedback and or yeah well because in the end my business if you like is is doing more of this with everyone now um things are going to grow quite strongly over the next few years and eventually we'll be talking to thousands of people and so forth right and that my business is to present the divine truth to everyone what all this is about is getting what's being presented and making it available to even more people. Does that make sense? And, and eventually, some of you will be presenting divine truth to people as well. And what we'll do with your stuff, if you allow that, because it'll be your free will whether you decide you allow that or not, what we'll do with your stuff is exactly the same as what this foundation is doing with my stuff. So what I eventually, eventually feel is going to happen is this foundation will have like lots and lots of people who are willing to travel, go and see groups of people in any country of the world, help them emotionally, be teachers in that regard, in a humble space themselves. They have to be in a very humble space to do this. And, and, and be able to interact and the foundation looks after a lot of the organisation of it and all of, the, and all of those kind of things and receives the donations and makes it grow and they receive personal donations for doing it. And in the end, like, we could have a library of hundreds of you giving talks every week and every one of those talks has a, some kind of presentation involved like an audio or a DVD or something associated with it and a whole team of people translating them and everything. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, that's where I see it will be going in the end, that eventually there'll be like, the divine truth will be so well known that it will be like a main, it will be mainstream and well known. And I'm not talking about a religion here or, or a business or any of those things. What I'm talking about is just getting God's truth onto this planet in such a way that instead of it being viewed as this little backwater cult sitting in Butterham, that it's actually... <laughs> Like the divine truth, you know, like the universal truth of how the universe operates, which is a totally different way than what most people see now, right? And, and so what I want to see is that, like, here's God's plan, if you like, for the universe. And this is available to everyone on the planet if you want to know about it. It doesn't matter whether you're Swahili, it doesn't matter if you're Portuguese, it doesn't matter if you're English or Russian, that you can actually find out the divine truth and actually develop your connection with God and grow into a condition of one went with God. And then you'll know yourself that it's all true and that it's all possible and all these potentialities are, possi are not just possibilities but actual fact. And once we get into that state, then of course the world will know and change quite rapidly after that. But, but what we need to do is do this for the moment and we'll get accused of being some kind of cult with this AJ cult leader who's a narcissistic, power-hungry person who wants you to do And we'll get all sorts of things happening in, that, in the beforehand. And many of you will be angry with me because I just chose to do something harmonious with love that you thought was unloving and so forth until we get into this state where, where, we're, where we're actually now you know, bringing the divine truth in every possible language to the planet. Yeah, and I personally feel that's why I came. <laughs> that's what I want to do, and so that's my passion and desire. And I want to talk to you about passion and desire next. Thanks, Brian, up the back there. If we could have a mic. Hey, Dave. Those of us from the foundation who go out and and talk about whatever divine truth, the, the aims of the foundation. Do we donate our intellectual property back to the foundation, presumably? No. And, and the, only, the only reason why I'm doing this is because... No, I'm not to you, to the foundation. Uh, to the foundation. We'll, no. no. What, whatever is your intellectual property, you can do with what you like. Okay. <laughs> it's yours. But it's available for us. We can donate it back to the you foundation. You can donate it back to the foundation yeah. if you want to. And okay. the foundation can be used as a vehicle then to distribute it if that's what you want. The only reason, by the way, that I'm doing this is not, is not for any other purpose than protecting the fact that it's for free. Because if somebody goes off with this foundation and goes off and decides, oh, boy, this is a lot of demand now. We've got a million people wanting the next audio mm -hmm. and they decide to charge $10 a pop, right? Now we've got $10 million coming in a week. That sounds like a good idea to me. That person might say, right? Doesn't sound like a very good idea to me at all. 
but it might be to this person because they haven't dealt with their money stuff or whatever. And so they decide they're going to now give the divine truth not for free anymore, but for $10. Right? Now they're totally out of harmony with what I wanted to achieve. Right? So if I've got nothing to do with the organisation, how do I stop that from happening? Well, the only way is by me having the, my own intellectual property and I just stop giving it. What the person does with what they've already got, I don't care, I'm not going to sue them. Why would I want to sue them? I don't care what they're going to do with what I've what I've already given them. I'll just go along and start another foundation that does it for free. <laughs> does that make sense? Yep, thanks. And then I'll invite some of the people who didn't like what was happening there into this one and I'm going to do that over and over again until we get it right. <laughs> I, I, I was just assuming that certain of us will find out um, from our person our self personalities um, certain truths um, that are God's truths um, as we progress that maybe other people won't find out and therefore yep. uh, how we'll uh, and we would like to make that a resource for other people. Yep. So is this intellectual property mine? Yeah. No. <laughs> it's not mine. The only, I, I'm, I've set up this company to protect it, but it's not my intellectual property. Right. That's not the way I see it. It's God's intellectual property, if we get down to it. So any divine truth you receive that I haven't yet received is not yours either. No. It's God's. That's, that's what's got me... And in fact, you wouldn't even receive it if you didn't have that attitude. Yeah, right. Okay. Got Does that it. make sense? That's, got, that's really put you it in place. You wouldn't even receive it from God yeah. unless you had the attitude that it's not yours. That's exactly what I wanted right. to hear. Thanks. Now, now, what you do with that, if you were in that place where you received, intellect, if you received knowledge from God that you believed was from God, if you were in the state where you were connected to God, you would never want to keep it to yourself. You would always want to give it away for free. All I'm doing is protecting the fact that I want to give it away for free rather than giving it to an organisation that might run off with it and decide to charge for it. Does that make sense? Because bear in mind that in the end I don't want to have anything to do with this organisation. When I say anything to do, obviously the principles of divine truth will affect the running of the organisation, but I don't want to have the day-to-day -day nut bolt, nuts and bolts do this, do that thing going on. I've got better things to do with my time, in my opinion. I'm not saying this is a bad job, by the way, either. What I'm saying is my job is to just present as much divine truth to the world as possible. And, and like I've got a stream of like another hundred subjects I'd like to talk to you about, you know, if, that I can feel about right now. You know, that's going to take how many years at two, two four a week? Well, that, four, four, four a month. That's two more years. So I could talk for two more years <laughs> and stu I still won't be finished with what I know now know already. Do you, do you know what I mean? And, and what will happen is once you're connecting with God, st stuff will just start coming to you about all sorts of subjects, honestly. And if, for, for yourself, Brian, you know, there's going to be all sorts of ways that you can help uh, gay, per gay people, for example, by teaching them divine truth after you've dealt with some of the, uh, your emotions yourself. And man... I can't help a heap of gay people. I'm not gay. Right? When I say I can't help them, I can present them the truth, right? which will obviously be able to help them, but I can't, t I can't have them come up to me and say, oh, you know this feeling that I have? I go, no, I've never had that feeling. <laughs> like, how can I help them now? I can't have any... I can have empathy for them, but I can't feel what they're feeling as, as if it was my feeling unless I, I'm in your position. So you'll be able to teach lots of truth to that group of people that I still can teach truth to, but not perhaps as well as you could. So go and do it. And if you want that truth available to well, That's what I'm scared of. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want that truth available to well, it's up to you. You can, you. you can do the same as what I'm doing, protect the property of what you're distributing so that it's always available for free, and then give it to any organisation you want around the world. Thanks. You do the same thing. Uh, Carol, down the front here. There's coming up. Just going on from that, AJ, mm -hmm. is it possible um, that if somebody like Brian or any of us had something like that come through, but we didn't want to set up a company to protect it and all that, that we just say, here, AJ, you can just go along with the rules of yours? 
you're like, you know, if, if we're not attached to it and... Yeah, well, I probably wouldn't do that. You wouldn't? Okay. The reason why is you're now making me responsible for your desires. Oh, right, okay, okay. <laughs> and that wouldn't be harmonious with love for me. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So, um, what, it, while, it, so that's for me. That's not saying that you couldn't do it to the organisation here. That's up to the organisation. Which in the end, remember, will have nothing to do with me. Yeah, but then it's not protected. Yeah. But, but you've got to look at... When you produce something and you want somebody else to distribute it for you, you've got to look at that emotionally. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> There's an emotional thing going on there. Right? What I'm doing here is I'm not wanting someone else to distribute it for me at all. They are wanting to distribute it for me. There's a big difference between those two states. Right? Now I'm setting up that. I want to distribute it for me. So I'm going to set that up right at the beginning and anybody else who comes along who wants to run that in the end, eventually, if they're harmonious with truth and love, I'll give it to them to run if that's what they want to do. And if they stop wanting to do that, then I'll just set up another one because I want the truth. I'll just go along and set up another one that's another foundation I don't know what I'd call it. Let's call it divine truth something else, right? Resources, whatever. And I will have the same goal for free because that organisation is now not doing what I feel needs to be done with the information. Does that make sense? And that's just going to continue over and over again, like I said, till it gets it right. Yeah. Any other questions? So what's your general thoughts about that? Sounds right? Does it, uh, does it stress some of you out? And a little in terms of like worried about, you know, oh, it's becoming a business now and all those kind of things. Any of you had those kind of feelings? Okay. You want to make a comment? Right up the back there. Is if you leave your hand up so Lorleen can see. That's it. First of all, I just wanted to say I feel that there's a lot of spirits interested in what you're saying here today. Yep. Secondly, I just thought that to stop a lot of the confusion... Um, on these questions, maybe uh, you could make a mission statement where you clearly say what the organisation is about. Um, that has to be done as a part of a non-profit organisation. So yeah. a so non-profit organisation has what is called a um, charter, and that charter has to be a written charter, mm -hmm. and it has to conform to certain guidelines. That's good. So um, a charter would be written, and, and obviously any person who wants to be involved in the organisation would be access to the charter. And because it's a public not-for-profit organisation, any person in the public could also access that charter. Excellent. So thank you for your time for explaining to all us today. But yeah, yeah. Right. Can you tell me why the spirit would be so... I just feel the heaviness in the room. Why they are so keenly interested in this? Um, what happens uh, a lot for many of our spirit friends is that they're very interested in an organisation being set up on the earth that actually practices the principles of divine love and truth in comparison to organisations who, pra who practice the principles of business. You see, many of us come from a business sort of a background, right? And so there's, there's a lot of uh, feelings, if you like, about, about how business should be conducted on the planet. And as a result, many of God's laws get compromised by business. And so many of our spirit friends are highly interested, in fact, in a in some kind of organisation being set up that actually is practising divine truth and love in, it, in the organisation itself. And one of, the, one of the goals, I feel, of this organisation is going to be demonstrating to other businesses how to change their business to become harmonious with divine love and truth. Does that make sense? So, so, and, and there are so many spirits interested in that because... They see that many of the damage, much of the soul damage that's done to people on this planet have to do with money and business. And so uh, if these kind of principles can be, can be put right across the board, that would actually create huge amounts of people in the, in the spirit world arriving in the spirit world in much better condition. Thank you. Yep. They're also uh, quite happy that I'm starting to decide to do things. <laughs> that's, a side, that's a side issue. Um, so, those two things to remember, no emotional resistance, it's really important. And by the way, when you think about it, isn't that what humility is? Being completely open and willing and desirous and passionate about feeling all of my own emotions, isn't that emotional, you know, no emotional resistance? And, 
And is it, aren't these principles all about love, like love of God, love of truth, love of others? So you can see why it's quite basic, really. It's going to be quite basic to set things up that way. By the way, when I say basic to set it up, it's not that basic to practice it, is it, as you've learned it, been learning? <laughs> yeah. All right, so there's no more questions about that. So I've been clear enough about what my intentions are. So if you hear about anyone saying my intentions are to create some kind of uh, worldwide empire of which I'm the head and I boss everybody around and tell them exactly what to do, and that you know exactly what my intentions are. Don't want to boss anybody around. <laughs> I have hard enough trouble bossing me around. <laughs> And in fact, in the end, you don't even want to boss yourself around anymore, is it? So, all right.